This is a 6 inch Tesla coil with a 6 mot power supply. We're ready to fire. Scott, go ahead. Okay, I have no idea what to expect because the way my gaps are adjusted, but we'll try it. I think that's our spark gap firing. I'm not getting. Yeah. Alright, this is test number two. Spark gaps readjusted. Hopefully, you'll get something. Yeah. Uh, too wide. Nothing. Alright, let's readjust it again. Alright, test number three. Okay, you're supposed to plug in the round cord, right? The round cord. Nothing. Alright, we're ready for test number four, and this time we got a little arc round there so we can arc straight to that. Yeah, it's definitely arcing, you just can't see it. It's me, way too bright out. Can you hit it again? Hit it again? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, I see it. I caught it on tape. Alright, so we got arcs. We just got some tuning. Go. Alright, this is test number I lost count. Five, five, five. It's test number five. Okay. Uh, we got this dead hum. Yeah, Scott. we need to adjust the spark gap. Hold on. Just leave it on. Leave it on. Alright, we're going to adjust the spark gap here. Meantime, I'll give you guys the tour. What we got here is we have our three buckets of our very high power microwave oven transformers wired in anti-parallel with a center tap ground that right there is our beautiful little knockoff Tupperware RF joke it's currently missing some capacitors but that's okay and then we have here gift of Mr. Wingate that we bought from him is our Maxwell high voltage capacitor you know some nice capacitance we have our nifty little primary coil here then our lathe wound secondary that goes up to our dryer wound toroid. It wasn't actually lathe wound, it was just kind of. Yeah, that is our lathe. Wound. That's our lathe. Oh. Lathe ish wound. Sort of. And then we have our asynchronous rotary spark gap, but we don't have enough power right now to Can actually run? spin it. So we have a static gap right now. Yeah, that's frustrating. But we're going to test it again and hopefully things will work out better. So we got this nice cord that you see on the ground and all these other cords that go to our nice control box. Um, it controls it. It's a box. What else do you need to know? Let's give this a whirl again. I'm not getting any... It's still arcing to it. I yeah. just can't see it. Zoom in on that spot. Let's just give it another quick... Are you zoomed in? Yeah. Yeah, it's going good to that spot. It's just too bright. It's too bright out, it's Scott. It's too bright to see it, yeah. All right, well, All right. let's wait for dark. All right. We'll be back. So we got something. All right. Well, as you can tell, it's a lot darker out right now, and we're going to test fire this puppy again, and uh, we got some spark gap issues because we can't run the rotary, but we'll see what we can get. Give it a whirl. That was boring. Our switch just died. Okay. <laughs> the push button switch just died. Alright. We still got the breaker though. So we're good. Alright, uh, turn off the camera because... Well, um, an interesting thing happened. We found out what the problem was. Uh, evidently, when we turn on the power supply, it's affecting the spark gap. It wasn't a power draw issue. It was an issue with uh, the magnetic field. It turns the motor by itself, so it's fighting it when we turn it on. So I'm going to go on the internet, do a little research, and see what I can find out. Uh, that's all. Are you recording? Go. Okay. Alright, stop. Go. Oh, I can see it better with a... Okay, uh, I've switched the position of the tank capacitor and the spark gap in the circuit in order to keep it from making the uh, safety gaps fire all the time and it works quite well. So our output is more consistent 
it's still lower than I had expected or hoped for, but uh, we just need to build a show ourselves a nice spark gap, and that should fix that problem. Okay, can you, can you see it? Yeah, I'm recording. Oh, you're recording? Okay, here it goes. Okay, uh, we've taken the breakout point off, and it now makes shorter arcs, but it makes a multitude of them. We're going to try to arc to the metal stand we have set up there with the pole on it. I don't know if it'll be well enough grounded to work, but I think it will, simply because of its sheer size. So we're going to try that now. It's a round plug, right? Yep. We got okay. the plug. Plugging in. This is, of course, Kids, nighttime. don't try this at home. Operating well, electrical things in snow may or may not be safe. We're not sure yet. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. Oh! And the wind is not good either, but... Well, it's not quite close enough. We're it's gonna... cool, though. Yeah, it's cool. We're going to adjust it and try again. Yeah. Alright, let's give this a whirl again. <laughs> I would say that's working. Yeah, I would say so. Alright, cool. How far I don't like it, so we're going to do this quick. And it's way out of tune now. I can't get it open. Oh, look, I'm recording. Okay. Threw it out of tune too much. Let me re tap yeah, the primary. Yeah. All right. Me. Just yell or something. All right. Now that's resisted. But we'll try. These meters just seem way worse. It's worse. Okay. Okay, uh, we've adjusted the coupling and put it in a better RF ground and it works better now. So, here. Go. All right, go again. All right, ready, night shot, here we go. Alright, turn it off. 